this, uh, this next comedian coming to the stage uh, has a, uh, a, a whole new perspective. Please welcome <laughs> Danny Palmer. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't clap just yet. <laughs> so, when you think back on the experience of kindergarten, it's just a very strange, bizarre world. I have a friend who's a kindergarten teacher, and she told me that she makes all of her students bring in a separate change of clothes to keep with them during the year to store under their desk, just in case they shit themselves. <laughs> I just think this is a very bizarre idea. I mean, can you imagine this kid sitting in front of you all year with this bag of clothes, and one day he comes in after lunch and he's wearing those clothes, and you're like, dude, you shit yourself. It's fucking obvious. I just think this would be a good concept to apply to the corporate world. You know? Your colleague Tom's got this brown suit in his office that he never wears, and one day you see him wearing it. You're like, Tom, what's up with the brown suit? I actually shit myself in the break room. So, uh... I didn't think. Uh, so kindergarten's cool, but eventually you have to die. And, uh... I like to think about the experience of the end of life, like what that would be like. And, uh, people talk about, if someone told you you only had six months left to live, what would you do? Here's what I do. I put together a little plan. And for the first three months, I would do all the standard shit that you're supposed to do. You know, make amends with your enemies, say goodbye to family and friends, all that bullshit. But then, for the last three months, I would go on the most ridiculous hedonistic binge of all time. I would be doing cocaine, I would be drinking every night, I would be fucking hookers without a condom. I would be doing... I'm serious. I'm not kidding. And I would do heroin, man. I would do a lot of fucking heroin. I'm not kidding, because I've never done it before, but you know that shit is good. People do not throw away their lives and live in empty houses for nothing. That shit is fucking good. So when the doctor... So when the doctor comes to my room and he's like, Danny, I'm sorry to let you know, but you only have 15 minutes left to live, I'm gonna be like, fuck that, hold this for the band, motherfucker. Um, so I, I, I'm always, I really enjoy the seedy underworld of things. I like the, you know, drugs and gangs and the mafia. And one game I really like to play is Grand Theft Auto. And I'll never forget the first time I played that game because I was just filled with this overwhelming sense of power and rage. And I just thought to myself, I'm going to rain down a shitstorm in this town, the likes of which I've never seen before. So I got in my car and I drive down the street and the first thing I did is I found a hooker. So I pull over to the side of the road, and I try to find the fuck button, and it won't fuck her. So I'm all pissed off. So I did the next best thing. I got out of my car, and I beat her to death with a club. Oh, good. I'm not the only one with this rage. But what I think would be a good idea is that if they add an extra round, or bored, where the guy's about to go out and do his mission, but this really big rainstorm rolls in. So instead of going out and doing his mission, he just stays inside, draws a warm bath, and reads a book. <laughs> you know? And all you do is just flip the pages for him. Just doop, doop, doop. Or maybe he's already out on his motorcycle doing his mission, and the rainstorm rolls in, so he just finds an overpass and waits it out. <laughs> you know, you're playing, your friends are about to go to the bar. Hey, Danny, you gonna come out? I gotta tell you guys, this storm system's stalling out over the area. I'm gonna be here a while. <laughs> so speaking of Grand Theft Auto, I think that uh, pet owners are a very curious breed. Uh, I haven't mastered the transitions yet, as you can tell. <laughs> Shit's hard, man. <laughs> okay. uh, so <laughs> Have you ever noticed that when the first time you play with someone's cat or dog, they're in the back and they have this really worried look on their face, like they're kind of anxious and you're, you know, like, what's the matter? It's like you're not doing it right, you're never like petting them the right way. And they, you know, they lean down and they're like, Danny, now I see what you're doing there, how you're throwing her the ball and that's nice. We actually roll it. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Is that what you do? Yeah, I, I noticed that you're scratching Tab with his back, which is a nice thing to do. We actually pet her behind the ears. Oh, yeah? Well, how does she like to get fucked? Because that's what I'm going to do next. So now I've got a series of things that are just random observations, just things that have been bothering me. And the first one is shoehorns. I don't understand why this is even a product. I mean, why is this something that you can buy? I mean, who is buying shoes so fucking tight you have to cram your foot in there with a fucking device? Just get the next size up. I don't understand that. The second thing is Ashton Kutcher. I know he was popular for a while, now he's not quite as popular, and I'm glad, because I really don't like the guy. I watched one episode of Punk, and uh, he talks about, um, you know, I'm immune to being punked. I am the fucking punk master. You can never get me, I'll never be punked. I've got an idea to fix that. I'm gonna mail that motherfucker a pipe bomb. <laughs> yeah, we'll see who the punk is when he's missing his right hand. The next thing that's been bothering me are bad spellers. Th this is like a small subset. I'm sorry if anybody here is a bad speller. But th the bad spellers that bother me are the ones that think it's not, it's just a little quirk that they have. It's just something that's a little bit silly. They're just a little bit eccentric. Oh, Danny, I am such a bad speller. I gotta tell you something, sweetheart. That's not a quirk. That means you're stupid. <laughs> All right? All right, the last little observation I have is, uh, when you go out to a bar and you want to see a local band, just some shit local band, it's like a $4 cover, and invariably, about halfway through the second set, they pass around a collection plate to take up a donation. I gotta tell you, shitty local bands are pretty low on my charitable contributions list. <laughs> Sorry, Katrina victims, you're gonna have to wait. These guys need a new drum set. <laughs> All right, now this is the part I've been dreading, because I'm gonna tell a personal story that just is gonna completely humiliate me, but fuck it. So. All right, so when I was in college, I had this work-study job uh, in the Learning Resource Center in the medical library. And uh, it was a really boring job. All you did was check out models and bones to people. You, you know, it was it. It just sucked. And my boss was this real bitch. I really hated her. I never had a worse boss. Just very petty, a micromanager. And uh, so the, the three facts of this story, that's the setting. The three facts are, I was a virgin in college. Sorry, girls. I was a virgin in college. I was very horny. And they had these anatomical models of the human body there. <laughs> you guys are smart. So one, one of the models was a naked woman, a woman and uh, all it was was from her like, stomach down to her thighs, and then her legs were spread open. So all year, that model is just sitting across the room just tormenting me. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know what? The perfect way to get revenge on my bitch boss would be to fuck that model on her desk. <laughs> So I did. But I couldn't get my dick into the plastic vagina because there was no lubrication. But thank God I had my shoehorn. Maybe it's not such a bad product after all. That's my time, thank you. Randy Palmer! By the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Danny is available for children's parties. And, uh, you know, I've been around, but that was fucked up. Sorry. Fucking up. Man. Didn't even have feet or a head. Well, you gotta be one horny college virgin to wanna fuck plastic. Now, I know women that have fucked for plastic, but never, that was sick. I apologize, but I also encourage it. 